Hey guys, today I am going to talk about the double standard that exists in Magic the Gathering. I've been playing Magic since elementary school. And my first pack was a beta pack. I've had this channel for some time, and even before this channel, I had another channel for Magic the Gathering called New Law Student when I was still in law school. I really do love this game but I've seen it change, and the biggest change I've seen is the double standard. I looked at many examples to try to show you how this is applied in practice. You can have a code of conduct, keep it vague, accuse people of violating the code of conduct without giving any details, and you can do targeted harassment and selective enforcement. And that is what Magic the Gathering is doing. I looked for a very good example of this, and I don't think we have a better example than Zach Jesse and Jeremy. Who is Zach Jesse? Well, Zach Jesse was a person who he was convicted or he settled. Essentially, he raped someone. He went to law school, University of Richmond, around the same time I was at William Mary, tried to better himself. His opponent, Drew Levin, called him out, and then a whole debate happened. He was suspended until, or banned until 2049, pretty much a lifetime ban. Card Kingdom is the sponsor of Hipsters of the Coast. You can tell from their title, they are left-leaning. And they actually made a hit piece on MTG headquarters on Sleeve Media where they said he harassed them and then now they're going to harass him. No one's hands are clean. My hands are not clean. Hipsters of the Coast's hands are not clean. But there is a double standard of prosecution. And they're... It is very clear that they are selectively enforcing this vague code of conduct on ideology. And I'm going to go straight to it. I looked and looked for good examples, and there are plenty of examples. This one, I think, is the most clear. Here, they talk about perception and why Zach just Jesse had to be suspended for competitive magic for the next three decades and why it's important that the perception uh, wizards had to make a statement about protecting the safety of tournament attendees right against zach jesse a sexual offender but when it came to protecting children from sexual offenders Publicly, publicly, they said nothing. In fact, they began attacking Jeremy. Why is this double standard? How does this double standard exist? They were so adamant about it being correct that Zach Jesse should be banned. He should never be allowed to play Magic because he is a sexual offender. And that's a bad image for Magic. You see these Card Kingdom advertisements everywhere, pretty much. Personally, I feel that what Jesse did is morally rehensible, and I had no problem with the decision made. However, let's step back for a moment and look at this from the position of Hasbro legal team. With a quick switch of the hat, I am now a lawyer for Hasbro. I don't believe this person has any legal background. It is very sketchy to say that now you're a lawyer. Getting Becoming a lawyer means you have to get a JD and means you have to pass a bar exam. It's not as easy as switching your hat. I do hope this guy who wrote the article, that he, I hope he is a lawyer and he understands how difficult it is because otherwise this is hilarious. You have people 
judging other people. And in this case, it's sexual offenders. You would think hipsters of the coast would be very much against sexual offenders. Because they are worried about the safety, the safety of the community. And you would expect them to say, okay, Jeremy, maybe you said some stuff that we didn't like, but you're doing good. You are, you did such a good job that you forced Wizard of the Coast to actually acknowledge that they made a mistake. That is what the legal, that is what that document they published recently was about. It was legal shift and liability saying we made the mistake, but the stores, they are the ones responsible. These stores have to do the background check. They legally cannot give money to your stores to do it. Even if they wanted to, they can't give money because then it seems that they have dominion over that. So here, Patrick Chapin is mentioned and he is, uh, I don't believe he's allowed to go to Japan anymore. He is, he dealt with drugs. Let's put an end to this one real quick. Sexual assault and dealing with drugs are two completely different things. More importantly, they're two completely different things from the perspective of which of these things disgust the average human being. Pretend that you're at a bar and we introduce to a friend of a friend. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm a former drug dealer. Would you miss a beat? Probably not. I would question this person. Drugs just don't have a huge negative stigma. Well, I mean, it depends on what drug, right? I mean, and if you're banned from an entire country, I would think that's kind of like a not pot related. Reality is not everyone can play magic. Obviously, the biggest barrier to entry is the financial one. They write these pieces and then they put these pieces on Reddit to get lots of views, lots of upvotes. And it's fair, I mean, even your name, Hipsters of the Coast. If I told you nothing about them, would you think that they are center, right, or left? Hipsters. Now, they wrote this long article about how Zach Jesse is the devil and you know having a sexual offender in magic is very bad. And here's the really double standard this is Card Kingdom. This is Tolarian Community College's sponsor. This is the person that Tolarian Community College is promoting. This is the person that a lot of bigger YouTubers are promoting and they get paid. I don't care how they want to phrase getting paid, oh, free product or free, I don't care. You get paid. If you get paid, you have to say good things about them. That's just how it works. That's called a sponsorship. So I would take, um, I mean, here's the, Hasbro is a toy company that makes toys for children. Going out of their way to be exclusive of women and minorities is seen as a positive development for shareholders. Going out of their way to defend sexual offenders isn't the kind of thing that makes your stock go up. Perception is king when it comes to the pro tour People want an inclusive environment, yes, but they also want a safe environment. After reading this entire article, you would believe that hipsters of the coast would be very adamantly opposed to sexual offenders who are judges. I don't think they are. I think they're opposed to whatever Jeremy is presenting. And that's the double standard. And it's clear as day from their treatment of Jeremy the controversial YouTube channel. I, when your first sentence starts out like that, you've already are, you've already made up your mind how the rest of your articles are gonna go. And you might say, okay, this is like Fox News, this is like CNN. Of course, people who read this are more inclined to be left leaning and more inclined to hate Jeremy and more inclined to hate Zach Jesse. But how ironic is it? The irony is so great that they in 2015 wrote an article saying that sexual offenders are a danger to magic and its brand 
and they prefer a safe environment to today. I'm not Jeremy's super best friend. I met him one time in person, and that's it. I haven't met any other content creator ever. I live my own life, and I enjoy my life. I have a good time doing my stuff. Maybe I'll make a video showing my daily life. It's really interesting. I don't need to like Jeremy to believe in his argument. Here we have in November 28th, uh, harassment and magic has to stop. I have tried to write this article dozens of times. I've actually been working on it since March, writing and rewriting, hoping that one of these times when I was done, I would look at the page to see words that convey this message. What do you think this article is about? It is about mediocre marketing sheriff. I became the target of his ire. I came close. I wrote an article about making sure we know the truth about all content creators, but I kept it vague. Think about the power of vagueness. I'm going to talk crap about you, but I'm not going to mention your name. But everyone who reads the article is going to know who you are. And then in my next article, I'm going to AKA, 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 AKA. Yeah, pretty much, right? The night it came out, came out. I woke up at 2 a.m. to my phone going off, off repeatedly. I normally put my phone on silent because my clients try to get to me, and no way I, am I answering a phone call after 10. You should probably keep your phone on silent too. I fir- and it was Twitter. Like Somehow the phone's ringing because of Twitter. Like Imagine if I did that on my social media for LinkedIn or something. No, these people in India keep asking me questions all the time. Card Kingdom again. He then made not one, but two videos about me on two of his channels, naming me, linking my article, and taking every word I said and twisting it. It hurt. It really blanking hurt. Between the two, it added up to a full 30 minutes of him hitting on me. The internet is a really hateful place. And just because someone hates you doesn't mean you need to return to hate. And that's what I see happening a lot is you have content creators, writers or YouTubers and who did who did what to who no one remembers anymore. The man of source, Tolarian, Darium, no one remembers what happened and it doesn't matter, but that the hatred is there. And it will never go away because no one's big enough to say, okay, no. It can be tough sometimes sharing who you are with the public while dealing with mental health issues. I knew when I started creating magic content, I would need to make sure that I had a good support system. But I did not expect to need an emergency plan in place for targeted harassment. I had a feeling I would occasionally get a negative message here or there but never thought my little eternal column would bring in a barrage of hate. So here's the interesting part about all this. The person who received the most hatred is Jeremy. This is not me siding with him. This is just fact. He received death threats. He received Um, His wife, they posted pictures of his wife, which is really creepy. And a lot of offensive, if not targeted harassment. Being, if you put yourself out there on the internet, you can fully expect people won't like, not everyone's going to love you. Some people will even hate you and you don't know why. And you can't change their minds. It's just the internet. I don't want to go into a spiel about being strong and being... Obviously, she mentions that she has some mental health issues. So I definitely will respect that. It's the internet. 
everyone's looking for attention, myself included. My hands are not clean. No one's hands are. Your favorite YouTubers, those who are beloved by Wizards of the Coast, their hands are not clean either. They have engaged in scam-like behavior. There, let me use a vague term. There was a YouTuber who is now very big and sponsored by Wizard of Coast. And what he used to do was he used to post these ridiculous one-liners on everyone's videos, mine included when he was smaller than my channel. And it would say, hey, love the video. And he did this because the comment would get upvoted. And then in every one of my videos, this was my new law student channel, you would see him, right? And it would be obvious that he's a magic channel and then people would subscribe. People didn't like that. Uh, people did not like that. So to summarize, you have a double standard. You have people who hate sexual offenders when it's Zach Jesse, but are okay with sexual offenders when they're judges if the person trying to go after them is someone they hate. You have people who said that they've been victims of targeted harassment, writing hit pieces on other people using targeted harassment. And only one person was banned. That was Jeremy. This person was not. Only one person, Zach Jesse, was gone since 2049. I think of one of my favorite cases, and this is a recent case. And this is a true case. I don't have it in front of me, but I'm going to summarize. I remember reading this case and saying, yeah, that's what America is about. This is exactly what America is about. There was a sexual offender. Um, he was 21 and had sexual relationships with someone who was 13. He is the definition of someone our society really, really dislikes. Like, this is the definition of a scumbag. He served his time in jail, came back, posted on Facebook about a, a ticket, some type of ticket that he got waived. And so he was really happy. Well, in North Carolina, the state that he's from, there, is, there was a law that said that all sexual offenders cannot be on social media platforms if they are underage people, which is Facebook, right? Like, how could you not? If a, someone who's underage saw a post or could see a post, then you would, they would punish this person with up to a year in jail. This is not a highly educated person. This is a guy in a very poor area. And the lawyer said, you know what? I'm going to take your case because I believe that people in really tough situations, they actually need the interaction. The social media can be something very valuable for them. And then eight to zero, it went all the way up to the Supreme Court in an eight to zero decision, which never happens, or almost never happens, because otherwise, why bring a case to court if it's so obvious, right? They said, hey, the sexual offender has a right to use Facebook. And if you take his right away to use Facebook, you're limiting his freedom of speech. You can't do that. Yes, it's a government, and yes, it was, you know, a, it's government, right? So it's not a private or public company, which can behave differently from the government. It just shows me that regardless of who you are, if you have a good argument and your argument is correct, people will see it. People will see the argument and they won't see your background. They won't see your history. They won't see. And that's the beauty of America is I won't always agree with you, but I will fight to the death to defend your right to say what you want to say. That's not Wizards of the Coast. And that's not the people they are sponsoring right now. Bye, guys.